uh, let's have a toast to uh, our uh, hot pot and wine tasting dinner. Okay, with a digital toast. Cheers. Yeah, toast. Cheers, guys. Yeah. I can uh, cheers yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> My um, kind of party. Cassandra, have you ever had hot pot before? You know, I have only once, and I believe it was from, and I'm so sorry, how do you pronounce this? Hot pot? Yeah, hot pot. Hot pot. Even teach us. <laughs> so it's Lu and then E Show. Like Louis Show. Louis Show, yeah. Louis Show. Louis Show. Yeah, so I think I did go to Louis Show in Richmond. Wow. And I felt hot there. That's awesome. Um, yeah, the thing that I really like about Louis Show's hot pot is that it comes with this like <laughs> chili oil butter cow. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, it's kind of sad because it melts in the it melts in the broth, but it's like it's so cute. <laughs> oh. Well, should we? Shall we? <laughs> yeah. Do it now, or do you want to wait uh, for uh, Cassandra to have the water? Yeah, I think my water just boiled, so I'm gonna go grab that. Okay. Well, let's let's wait for but like, look how cute this is, everyone. So this is like super unique to Louis Show. It just it adds more flavor to the broth, and it's so cute. <laughs> So I have two sides here. Where I'm gonna just pour it in both. I uh, pour it in both, yeah. Yeah, and then you'll have the two broths that you can kind of put together with that too. So probably have to boil. I think I have to boil another one. So uh, wouldn't it be cute, like if you actually could get this from a supermarket? Oh, you can. Can you? Can? Yeah, they're working on it right now. Like, right oh, now. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it like, yeah, like so, we already like, have the the uh, soup base actually produced. Um, it's one hundred percent made with well, Albertan like cattle. Actually, the the beef tallow, you know, is actually from Albertan beef. Um, How high would we like to have this? So I would start uh, it full, right? Like to start, and then you can bring it down once it's boiling. I'm just gonna boil another kettle as well, just to be sure. So in the meantime, I'll have to sample some of the Riesling. Yeah, I must say this little cow, like, oh, mm -hmm. that is so cute. And what is he made of? It's actually made of beef tallow. That's beef fat or beef fat. Yeah. Uh, and even you were just mentioning that in Alberta, they use Albertan uh, beef. beef. And how, how about in Vancouver? What, do, what are we, uh, do we have Alberta beef too? Uh, we use it actually. We use different suppliers, you know, um, that we we get. But then they're actually from Angus beef because okay. Angus beef can only produce this much of fats to produce um, this beef tallow, right? And also it mixed with all the um, uh, traditional spices from Sichuan province, like the Sichuan peppercorn and the, red, the the red hot chili pepper. Is that a band? Red hot chili pepper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, a lot of other like you know like spices so yeah like different type of little chilies that's why it make the flavor really complex this yeah. is like so exciting like if you had people over and you had this all set up you would be a star yeah, yeah. It's i don't know if i'm gonna give this burner back or the box <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, we have a lot of like Asian grocery stores here that do sell the burner and the pot um, so that you can have the home parties pretty easily and it's always like it always impresses people when you have like yeah. any uh, Asian supermarket that will have uh, these you know like TNT or H Mart they, they all have this so you can just yeah, like have, um, in Edmonton there's a local so our Lu Louis show is in our Chinatown so then just across the street down the road there's a kim fat market is kind of our one of our local ones local asian grocers so let me give you a little background of the louis Lu show hot pot uh, the restaurant so it was founded in uh, i think year 2000 uh, it's it's actually started just like street food you know you just like have you know have hot pot on the street you know and in Chongqing, china like a little Little, little stand, but um, I guess like you know, twenty years later, and there's a hundred, like well, actually, twelve hundred, you know, plus uh, location all around the world. So it's crazy how how many. And then uh, in North America, we have, I think they have uh, about fourteen. Like they have fourteen locations right now, and they have four more locations coming. And 
uh, in Canada, we have eight locations. Um, three in Vancouver, uh, Greater Vancouver, Burnaby, Richmond, and downtown Vancouver. Uh, one in Edmonton, of course. So there's four in Western Canada. <laughs> and um, we have three in Toronto and one in Ottawa. The U.S., the, there's New York, you know, in Queens, in Flushing. Uh, there's three on the West East Coast. Uh, there's Princeton, Boston, New York. And then on the uh, West Coast, there's San Diego, San Francisco, and Seattle. Uh, but we're having four more coming up like this year, actually, at the end of summer, um, which were uh, supposed to uh, open like last year, but because of the pandemic, right? So, and then, right. But um, I'm glad they're actually um, all opening like this year. One in San Jose, like in the center of the Silicon Valley, and one in Houston, one in Canada, in Montreal, and then one in Chicago. What am I doing now? So um, just take out the little little cattle and put it put it put it aside first, and then you can just dump the rest into one side. Mm -hmm. So that, that's these two yeah, pieces these two. here. This one I, in the one side, yeah. One side. You have a little container of the mushroom soup, and you can just dump it on the other side. And the other side, and but I've got water in there too. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. fine. The, the mushroom soup is pretty concentrated. Awesome. There you go. Wow. You smell the Chinese herb. <laughs> and then the cow takes a bath. <laughs> and got a broth on this one side here. Yeah, these are like a clear broth, and basically they want to uh, create, like, you know, sort of a contrast. Uh, the vegetable doesn't taste really good. We could put it on a spicy side because it'd be too spicy for the vegetable. So usually you put the vegetable on the non spicy side. So, what, um, how is Lilishu different? Speaking of Lilishu, different from like other hot pot places, like, what would you say sets them apart? Uh, but, Basically, they're specializing in the Sichuan and Chongqing style, spicy hot pot, a popular uh, in China right now. And then um, uh, because people love the spices and you actually give them more excitement. And even people who doesn't eat, eat spicy food, they can actually, uh, you know, like to take you know, this kind of spices because of the nat nature itself. It's not just spicy, but it has so much other flavor. And also the beef tallow actually mellow down the yeah. spiciness, right? So, and I have friends who never eat like really spicy food. They can actually, you know, like sort of like slowly getting adapted to, to the you know, spicy, um, spicy broth because of the, the, the beef tallow. When you're in the restaurant, do they use a gas grill like this as well? They so. actually use induction burner, I think. Or oh, okay. Burner, yeah, because they have like a built-in burner uh, on, on the. Table. Right, right, uh, yes. So I have to mention something about uh, the location in Edmonton. Um, I guess like the the food scene is slightly different, you know, like a different city. So Edmonton, the market, there's a lot of competition in Edmonton, right? Like for the Chinese hot pot. Uh, do you agree that most of the uh, hot pot restaurants in Edmonton are all you can eat? Yeah, yeah. Right. So this would be the, yeah, the so Louis show, I think, is the only one in the city that's not all you can yeah. eat. Yeah, so, I mean, that's make that's the difference, you know, because, like, when you not you all you can eat, you actually provide the best quality of food, you know, like the beef, because, like, all you can eat beef, um, they probably have good quality, but not the best quality, so. Right. Because I knew you showed they give you the best quality of beef. Yeah, I even noticed that when we got the packaging to take home, the beef just looked so good and red and yeah, yeah the top yeah. depth. Normally, if they only eat meat ones, they're a lot thinner. Yeah. The marbles on the beef is really yeah. yeah, exactly. And I, I'm sure yours is nicer. It's, from, it's right from Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just down the road. No. <laughs> cool. No, that makes a lot of fun. Do you have like two burners running? Or? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a little pot because um, I like to throw seafood in mine. Loki, Loki! <laughs> our cat's trying to get the food. Wow, you're like an expert. You you know how to have different different ones. <laughs> <running. laughs> yeah, he doesn't like it when my seafood mixes into his broth, so we just sort of split it. So I have both, and then he did like a mix of both. <laughs> Mike wants a top up of the wine. This is a. Do we want to talk about the wine yet, or are we waiting? 
Wow. So what do you think of, so I, I heard uh, Mike is the one expert here, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, in this more room, than that. more, okay, sorry. <laughs> there you go. It's very tasty. What do you like about it? You have to be a wine connoisseur. There you go. Swish it. Swish it. Hints, hints of apple. Swish it for the camera. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll spill. <laughs> <laughs> hints of apple is that right <laughs> <laughs> refreshing yeah. i do actually like this one normally a lot of the wines i just don't have a, a taste for it but this one i it's like it goes down easy well it's off dry so which means it's kind of it's not like bone dry but it's like sort of it has, has it has like a fruitiness but then it's yeah just a little it's dry so it's three that's actually happy it's not too sweet I, I, I like the sweetness, but it's, yeah. it's not too sweet though. It's, it's a nice balance, I guess. Try this. This is actually I'm looking forward to this. This is a. Uh, have you guys been to Time Winery in BC? No. We haven't. Oh. It's on our list. We love Kelowna area. Yeah, it's actually in Penticton, so we're on the oh. south of the lake. Yeah, not too far. From it's it's beautiful. It's actually a beautiful winery. It's like urban winery. So. Uh, I like your setup, Linda. Yeah. Yeah, I just um I just use this is like a chips and dip platter. And then we actually have like we have like these fondue plates, so they have separated sauce. <laughs> You're still up here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so what I usually awesome. do if I post about like home hot pot, everyone's always like, Where did you yeah. get the plate? And it's like from a cheap fondue set. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. That looks perfect. Uh, it looks like for, uh, something for the Lunar New Year, you know, you have like the whole yeah, thing. We'll just spin it. The goody, the goody platter, you know, that's what it's called. Well, because I feel like if you do hot pot at home, like part of it is all about the display. Like it's about really good food, but it's also about this presentation. <laughs> nice. Hey, David, can you tell us about the sauces while we're waiting too? Yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna tell. There's like three sauces. Uh, there's like the little pasty one. That's the sesame paste uh, uh, sauce. That's actually a t like a very typical dipping sauce from northern China. Um, it's really good for eating lamb. So people like to eat that with like lamb sesame. Paste. The one with just sesame oil and uh, and garlic. That's called the oil plate. And that's a very typical uh, Chongqing Sichuan style because when you actually dip your food in a spicy hot pot, you, like it's already flavored. You don't need more like mm -hmm. extra like savory flavors. You just have to dip it in the sesame oil and the garlic. Sesame oil would actually protect you from the spiciness a little bit. You can actually like you know like enjoy spicy a little bit more. So that's a little trick if you have like spicy hot pot. The other one is called a seafood sauce. So this is more of like a Cantonese style. Uh, so it has like, um, the main ingredient is soy sauce. So soy sauce, and a little bit garlic, a little bit hoisin, uh, hoisin sauce, and then also sacha. Oh. So this, this will be perfect when you have like, you know, dip some food in a mushroom soup, and then you can put that in your, your... I stuck my finger in this one here, <laughs> and it is very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys get heart-shaped shrimp cake? Because ours is heart-shaped. It's so cute. Oh, we have a different uh, shape, I think. <laughs> yeah. So I the ever the the logo, but, Oh, wow. We have two hearts. It's so cute. Yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> we have the thumb up. Oh, oh that's fun. What <laughs> yeah, hold yours up, Commander. So you show me two hearts, I'll give you a thumb up. <laughs> <laughs> I do like my heart. What is this? So it's a it's a shrimp paste. This oh, cool. Okay. So yeah, this is the logo of the Louis Show hot pot, actually. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> when do you all go for hot pot? Like I always order beer, really, with that Chinese food. But I've been um, I've been part of um, a couple wineries that I've I've worked with in the past that have specialized in sourcing to Asian restaurants. And what, what are you finding, like for me, I always like with Asian food, because there's that spice, you can't have a ton of alcohol or it'll just kick you in the head. And you also have to have a bit of that uh, residual sugar because that really takes the edge off. 
-hmm. So that's what I'm finding. Um, these are really good selections for that, especially the Riesling. I'm loving yeah. the wine there. I love both wines, but I think the Riesling is really going to be the star here just because it's got that. It's got that acidity, but it's got that residual sugar, and it's got that low alcohol. And, and if you have heat, which comes in the form of alcohol, and heat, which comes in the form of chilies, that's where you really get stuck in, in food pairing. So I'm, I think this is an excellent choice. It's really good, yeah. Awesome. Sure. And then the acidity and a little bit of the citrusy, you know, it really helps like, to, uh, for you to have, like, enjoy the digest food as well. If you're having beer, beer is good. Your beer will cool you down, right? Like you, you actually would do complement like a spicy food. But I mean, beer. I mean, like you, it's it's kind of like you're drinking a lot of beer, and then you kind of like you you're getting full from beer too at the same time, right? So, yeah. yeah. So so having, but I mean, a lot of people enjoy hot pot with beer. I think it works too. Yeah. So bubbles, there's bubbles. Hey! <laughs> it is a big pot that you're having right there, you know, uh, Cassandra. It's a big pot, so that's why it takes the, the time to, to boil. Yeah, what, they are bigger pots. What about what about you, you guys, Linda, like uh, Mike? Like, is yours boiling yet? Or? Oh, yeah, we're we're ready to go whenever you guys are ready. <laughs> it's it's bubbling now, so should I put my cow in? Back. <laughs> yeah, so we can. Anyways, this so is, oily. This is our. Beef cow is so cute, and he's gonna go for a bath now. Let's have a cheer with this. Okay. <laughs> go closer, Mike. <laughs> Here, I'll do it. Our footless cow. Say goodbye. Our... Cheers. Yeah. Go for a swim. Woo. You put it in, and then I'll come. Oh. <laughs> No, it's this side. No, it's this side. No, it's this side. No, it's this side. The first what side. What side do we put it in? This, the... Not the mushroom broth. Yeah, uh, this is the mushroom broth. The darker red. No, see? He's putting in the darker red. I told you. Okay, hold on. No, it's because you didn't put these things in no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's go. The beef cow is where all the nutrients are. If you have like a free range beef and um, you have <laughs> that tallow and there's so many nutrients, we're in for a treat. Oh my god, he's so cute. So cute yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> really enjoying it. <laughs> Here's thanks for your sacrifice, cowman. Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. So I like for for special occasion, we'll make them in different shape, you know. And uh, I think in the uh, like Chinese New Year, uh, the, it's a year to pick with a little picky, you know, shape. Or I think yeah. some, sometimes they have the hollow. Shape. Hello Kitty shape as well, but I don't know <laughs> how, how popular that one is. So. <laughs> don't, don't murder him! <laughs> <laughs> I need his head for my bro. Is your marriage going to survive this hot pot? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm concerned. Head overboard. <laughs> Cow overboard. <laughs> well, Cassandra, how spicy can you handle? Uh, well, so um, weird, I don't want to get too carried oh. away. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah just like you know um take my uh suggestion you know like after you cook you dip it in the oil dish and then yeah, the oil. And, like when you do chinese hot pot and usually you start with uh something like what they call the um the offal or the utility meat first but you start with like beet tribe or yeah like, you know like, like that yeah. I find when I make when I do hot pot, I just only use the meat the whole time. <laughs> Sorry, only using what? Only use the meat the whole time. He's a meat, <laughs> he's a meat lover. Um, I usually, if I have noodles and stuff, I'll put in the noodles first. That oh. takes a little longer. Good idea. Um, and then, Cassandra, when we start uh, grabbing meats and stuff, if you don't have a separate like chopsticks. Mm -hmm. So just to avoid contamination, you can do the raw meat with the one side and then flip it to eat I it. I got tongs. See, I told you. Oh, like, oh, that's, so much, that's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> You're the expert here. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so are we going to start putting stuff in? Because I really like to. <laughs> <laughs> I like to put, uh, I don't eat beef first. So I just put beef in. Yeah. The beef only takes like 30 seconds or... Depends how well you want your steak done, right? <laughs> Same, it's apply with uh, <laughs> apply with like a beef here too. 
and these are Angus beef, right? So they're you just, just make sure don't overcook them. <laughs> Quality Alberta beef. How well do you like your steak? I mean, I know it's not like a hot pot question, but <laughs> how well do you adjust you? things here? We're a medium rare kind of family. Okay. Let me get let me get another chocolate. All right. Know. See, mine is already cooked. I yeah. can't wait to have my first bite. Oh my god, I'm ready. So you Me want too. To there tops. you go. Oh, and, uh, yeah. Should we have a yeah. first bite? Yeah. Right. Simultaneous <laughs> beef eating. Oh, wow. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mmm, good. That's spicy. Holy. <laughs> Which one? Oh, your concoction. Um, it merged with that. Right? Like, uh, to cook it, like, only for no longer than 30 seconds. Oh, I need more wine. Oh, yeah. I don't have that wine here. So what about you guys, Linda and Mike? Like, how spicy can you guys uh, handle? I really like spice. Um, as, as I get older, I find I can eat less and less spice. Yeah, it's true. He, he, like as he got older, he's been scaling back his spicy levels. Um, as long as I have a uh, heartburn pills, and <laughs> <laughs> he, pop, he pops heartburn pills and then eats spicy. Food. <laughs> I really like spice. I feel like all my taste buds are just burned off, so I <laughs> so I can go spicier and spicier in order to feel something. <laughs> This is delicious. Yeah. yeah. And it's really good with the wine. Which dipping sauce do you use, Cassandra? Do you use any dipping sauce? I'm using this. Okay. Oh, okay. That's for, like, yeah. That's the... And some of the garlicky spicy one. And you can, like, just mix them together, too, you know, mix and match, you know, and then it's, it's there's no, like, uh, strict rule in hot pot. You can just cook whatever you like, and you can mix it. That's why, you know, at Liu Yishou Hot Pot, they have the sauce bar, right? Uh, mm -hmm. so basically, they have all the probably so funny sauces, and condiments, so you can mix and match, and you can make your own sauces. But they do have some, uh, you know, like some diagrams. So uh, they have like different regional, like, you know, dipping sauce. So you can follow diagrams to make different sauces. So, yeah. Yeah, I like that Hot Pot is a very, like, it can be, a, it's like, it's, it's a it's a shared experience usually with people but then each person's pot is so personalized to them and like what they like and what toppings they want what sauces they want mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the reasons i really love hot pot yeah everyone have their favorite ingredient and that's good oh wow oh this is spicy <laughs> <laughs> i <Spicy>. love it <laughs> i need more wine Oh, more wine? Okay, wait, hold it up to the camera so you can get a wine shot here. No, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. You gotta play it up for the YouTube live, but don't cover my face. I'm gonna continue cooking here a little bit then. Yeah, just throw throw whatever you want in now. <laughs> uh, three seconds being curved. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, I see that on your platter. <laughs> So, three seconds. I put it in for way too long. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take mine out now. <laughs> sponge like absorb flavors. So I'm gonna put it in like my uh, mushroom soup. Yeah. One, two, three. There we go. Yay. That's cool. So what do you recommend putting on the really, the beef tallow side? You know what side? Um, well, I usually eat it with meat. So uh, put try try with the meat, like the beef or lamb. Like what? Sorry. Try with the, uh, with some meat, beef or lamb. So you can just cook it. You can just like cook it with your tongue, like you just like this, and just dip it like this for like count like fifteen seconds to thirty seconds, and then you. That's how we. Oh, actually, your soup will cook already. <laughs> See. They're like really good quality beef, so you know you don't want to overcook them. Yeah, it's done. Oh, 
We've got two dogs that are sitting right underneath us waiting for us to drop something. <laughs> can we do some of these meatballs then? Yeah, uh, you can put them in now actually. So let them cook in the bottom. They take a little bit of while. They take at least like one to two and minutes. put them in the broth side? Uh, doesn't matter. You can put it in either way. So why don't you just try them both, you know, and see like um, how they compare. I'm going to put them in one side and then I'm going to dip them in the other. Sure, okay. Mm. What do we think? I also, love drinking, I also love drinking the hot pot broth. So normally I'll have like an extra bowl with like rice. We actually have rice mm -hmm. with us. I think for Chinese hot pot, you can have two-sided, like double-sided hot pot. You will actually have a little bowl of this, the non-spicy soup first, and then yeah. the warm yeah. stomach. That's like yeah. the big appetizer, yeah. It's great. It's, yeah. I often get people will ask, what's the difference between, like, hot pot and hot pot? Um, and then I would say, like, well, you would never drink the fondue, like, babe. <laughs> you <would. laughs> but you would totally drink the hot pot broth. <laughs> My husband got really involved in the hot, hot sauce there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so next, we can probably try this uh, shrimp paste. Oh, yay. I was just hoping that you would say that. <laughs> so good. Hot pot is so good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like comfort heaven. Definitely comfort food. <laughs> Holy. Oh, no. <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> In about three? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, making this little shrimp ball right now. Oh, so you, you know the thumb, the thumb up, you know shrimp paste. You can just use a spoon, just like kind of spoon a little ball, and then just pump it in. Oh, nice. In the thing. In oh, the I've, I've got all the other little balls in there, though. So. And the uh, shrimp paste cook really fast and then easy to cook. You know, once you see them floating on top and then they're done. So, very easy to cook. <laughs> I just bought these um, the other day, like a little... Oh, nice. That one? <laughs> yeah. I like that. I have this one. You can't see it right now. I think it says meow. <laughs> <laughs> I like I when you buy one glass to show your personality. Meow, like a cat. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so we're gonna have the effervescence. I feel uh, like you guys have already like dived into the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> now we have the effervescence. Wait, give it a bottle. Oh, we're gonna show it. Just so you guys know, it's carbonated. <laughs> In case you couldn't tell when the top showed up. Wait no longer. Just pop open and raise a glass. Oh, pop open. Pop open. You might get notes of ripe peach and rich berry fruit in your glass. But all you really need to know is that it sparkles, yeah. just like you. <laughs> so this is uh, the welcoming sparkling when you go, to, like you when you visit, like the wine, the, wine, uh, the time winery. Mm -hmm. so, oh, ah! oh my god! <laughs> it did the same thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> oh my god, Cassandra, did you open yours yet? So, so let's tell. Oh, I opened one before. So, did you have uh, an explosion? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm a pro. Oh. <laughs> so I'm I just realized it was sparkly. You might have done it differently. You well, knew. I opened it with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. All right. Hey, that just makes for good uh, video. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what we want. Wow. Very excited, like, uh, drink. Very <laughs> exciting. And I'm trying some of these little shrimp balls. Yay. Which work really well with the effervescence, actually. Oh, wow. Very much cool. The shrimp paste is so good. Wow. It's so spicy. <laughs> I'm going to try one of the balls with the effervescence. Mm hmm Oh, too hot. I have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Does spicy food make you guys sneeze? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> it makes me sneeze. <laughs> you guys like? Do you have you guys like? Um, I know, like Cassandra probably visit the Okanagan like once or twice a year, but 
overall, Linda and Mike, have you, do you guys visit the Okanagan often or? Yeah, like in, um, in Edmonton, it's quite common for Edmontonians to drive over to the Okanagan every summer. Um, it's about 12 hours drive. Okay. So it is, it is longer, but um, people love it. So we've done it a couple of times. Oh. Um, we celebrated one of our like wedding anniversaries in the Okanagan once. That was really nice. Yeah. And like the, the weather is just always so nice. Mm -hmm. How far is it from Vancouver? Uh, it's just four hours. Four hours, four hours. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually from Kelowna. So I, okay. I went to high school there. I used to um, where Cedar Creek Winery is now. Right. Um, it's called Uniac way back in the day. Pardon me, I'm speaking and eating. Um, and that was like one of my friends that I grew up with. Um, that was her, her family winery. Um, and there weren't many wineries at all when I was growing up. Like, you know, the, the industry is only, I think some of the wineries have celebrated, you know, 30, 35 years. Okay. And so when I was, you know, 10, 20, well, when I was 20, things started happening. But when I was in high school, there wasn't a lot of actual wineries. Um, so, yeah. Now they're everywhere. Now they're everywhere, yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. What's like brewery in Alberta? In Alberta, there weren't very many breweries because um, of different government rules. Uh, and then they changed the rules about a decade ago. Now we have like well over 100. No, oh, there's way more than 100. Almost maybe 200 craft breweries in Alberta. You just oh, like oh. sprout it up, yeah. <laughs> so I have to make it like you know, a, well, one of the things I have to do like when I'm in uh, um, Edmonton. With the brewery, yeah, brewery. we have a ton of great local breweries. And there's lots of brewery tours. <laughs> lots of brewery tours. It's a very supportive like community. I'm actually friends with someone who wrote uh, a book about Alberta beer. Okay. Um, it's called Tapping West. Shout out to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> My husband says spicy. <laughs> yeah. I, I concur. But it's but, not but, like uh, just pure spicy, but it does like, you know, uh, give you a little bit of the aroma, right? Like it's, it has yeah. also the numbing. Oh, there's flavor. Yeah, it's not just spice. Oh, yeah. There's so much flavor. There's so much, you know, like the mushroom, the whole umami of it all is just like, whoa. Is Luisho, um, are they doing more like takeout now? So the people can order takeout? Yes. Yeah, they're doing more takeouts now, and then they have to think of, uh, they don't do a lot of regular dishes, you know, like other than just hot pot, but they're doing more dishes now, just trying to actually bring the flavors, you know, to uh, regular dishes that are actually more easier for people to actually enjoy. Uh, have you guys heard of a uh, dry hot pot? Mm, no. Or, about dry or, or chili pot? It's, I think it's called Xiangguo, but it's like, um, um, it's very popular right now, um, even in, I think in Vancouver, it's pretty popular, like in the Chinese community, so it's, um, um, so basically you pick uh, whatever they offer on the hot pot ingredients uh, menu, you can pick like four meats and four veggies, and then they will actually use the hot pot uh, spices to make a big stir fry for you. Oh, oh nice. Cool. And, yeah. yeah, I've got the lotus root in now. I think that'll take a little while. Good idea, yeah. It would take like at least like a few minutes, yeah, like five minutes or so. These are, these are oh, yeah. spicy. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how much longer I can go like just kind of like trying to be conservative eating here, so. Oh my God. Oh, um, we're not being conservative at all. Well, no, we're like, can we shut our cameras off and really get into it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Linda's hot pot is Overfilling. Yeah, I have lots of stuff in here. So, like, throw everything you want, I would say. I mean, I will. What do you think, David? <laughs> <laughs> so much food. Yeah, Linda doesn't follow any rules, so. Around timing. <laughs> as soon as we put the cow in for the bath, I was just throwing stuff in. <laughs> also, uh, thank you. Thank you for the tip, uh, Cassandra. Like, actually, uh, the usual hot pot soup bases, they're actually available at London Drugs now. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah, because uh, uh, well, I don't know if it's the uh, same in Alberta, but like um, in, 
in here in Greater Vancouver, we have the local central uh, initiative. So they actually the London Brooks actually putting like local uh, restaurants um, food or cheese oh. actually on their shelf for free. You know, like they're selling them for, like they're not like taking any like you know like cool. profit from it, right? So it's pretty cool. Do you have any insight? You know, that you want to share about the pandemic, you guys? How do you find you know like the difficult it is and to get like you know like um, like take you know like regular food or like takeout food and like do you? Well, actually- I mean, we have to give we have to give the restaurants and and BC is different than Alberta, but our restaurant scene has been um, not given information when they needed information, and that was one thing. Even now, we don't know what's happening on on Tuesday. The twenty fifth, mm-hmm. the order finishes it on the twenty fourth, and we've been given as a restaurant community. They haven't been given clear instruction. So our restaurants, they are the most creative people. They're the people that, when we are doing charity fundraisers, that we ask for things from. And I, you know, kudos to all of the restaurants that have made it happen because it's it's insane what they've gone through and and the not knowing is a big part of it and we've seen so many really cool things happen but Mm -hmm. it's because of the inventive nature of the people in the community that run these restaurants and and i i just think that's fabulous but if i could say anything it would just be like wow could we just have a little bit more clarity ahead of time and yeah and we miss of course we miss dining in we want everybody to be safe but um there wasn't a lot of cases of people getting sick in restaurants. It was private homes and parties. So it's a bit of a mixed message out there. Definitely, definitely, yeah. I, I think like, you know, like, um, I think the usual hot pot is like going through the same thing, you know, like just not knowing how, you know, how to handle the situation and whatnot. And, and but then they actually, they survive, right? So they actually, yeah. you know, kind of how to come up with ideas of takeouts and then, you know, like, they even like do like really, like, you know, they have a common, like, you know, it's a common date, you know, like what people need, you know, to make, like, dishes they like, you know, and then to deliver to their home. So it's actually... It's yeah, I, David, I would have never thought of doing this at home. So thank you for that introduction. Oh, you can do hop out at home. Actually... I never really thought of, like, you know, getting, a, like, delivery service and doing it like this. So this is a great event on their behalf. And it's actually cheaper than actually getting like um, hot pot ingredient from a supermarket. You know why? Because you have to buy a certain amount in the supermarket. And yeah. here, like you can just, you know, like they actually can just design a dinner for two. So you can just like, um, I just kind of order the dinner for two and take it home. And then it's actually much, it's actually much, uh, much better deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's better for management. Normally, if we do hot pot for home, we're buying all of these different ingredients, and then we actually end up probably doing hot pot for like three days after because <laughs> we buy it yes. too much. <laughs> yeah, we did it at New Year's. We did it at New Year's, and we were eating it for like a week. Um, we just yeah. had hot pot every night. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, but it's nice when something like this it does come pre-portioned well, and we know that we're not gonna be wasting food. Or- um, I was just wondering, oh, do the wines? Can better. you order wine with hot pot? Uh, actually, hmm, that's a good question. I think we should, we should, that's actually, that's why we have this, uh, dinner party tonight, because I think we want to introduce, like, wine, uh, you know, like a wine program, like a better wine program for the show hot pot, you know, so, um, so people can order wine, because, like, they do have a wine and beer license at the restaurant, so they can definitely can sell wine and beer, right? So, and then... Yeah, maybe yeah. what we're tasting today, you know, maybe these are actually perfect, like really good with wine. Like, you know, we got I was just going to share about Edmonton restaurants in the pandemic. Um, very similarly, a lot of the restaurants here have, because they've had to, they've had, like, it's, I think it sounds, it's funny because when you hear, like, oh, they've switched to the takeout or they're doing better takeout, it sounds simple. Or, or suddenly they're on Instagram. They weren't on Instagram before. And so these things maybe don't sound very innovative, but the pandemic, I think, totally pushed um, restaurants to try to figure out how best to, to like stay in the minds of their customers. Um, and it's amazing. Like here we've had restaurants switch to 
virtual uh, cooking classes. We've had uh, we've had a lot of restaurants still like donating food to support um, our homeless populations or our less fortunate people. Even during the pandemic, we had some restaurants that were you know if you're struggling during the pandemic, come in. We want to give you a meal. Um, so that's been really heartwarming to see um, that community aspect of it as well. We've had a lot of like restaurant owners kind of coming together. Sort of what Cassandra said, you know, with government, uh, with governments not giving enough notice or, yeah. you know, kind of doing these teeter totter restrictions. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of restaurant owners have become like advocates yeah. uh, for the industry as well um, and kind of pushing for. Uh, yeah, pushing for safety, pushing for, you know, um, a bit more notice when you're going to change something or asking, you know, for evidence why. Um, so, yeah, so it's been really, uh, I think it's been, and I think it's been, we've seen, I don't know if this is true for BC, but we've seen a lot of uh, Edmontonians really show up to uh, spend local and support local. And I think these were maybe like buzzwords before, um, but now is like, very much everyone's trying to think okay you know where are we going to have our friday night dinner let's make sure that we're picking you know a uh, um a local business um so that's really yeah, cool. well said linda and i think i think that's what people are, are missing I, I even was listening to a podcast that was out of new york and people are going to hit the neighborhood restaurants uh, first and foremost and um another interesting article that i read lately um by alex gill from the globe and mail was talking about how our Vancouver restaurants, like Chinese restaurants, you don't usually sit on a patio and have dim sum. But you know, we've got a we've got about twenty restaurants, I think she said, that are that are doing dim sum like Pink Pearl, and they're they're in their parking lot with white tables, and they're <laughs> they've got the dim sum carts. And it's incredible. It was I went actually went to Pink Pearl, and then people comment like <laughs> some some uh, like people comment like, oh, like why you're eating outside, and I'm like. Well, <laughs> eating that's outside. the choice. I want my dim sum. I was like, well, it's, it's such a common thing in Asia, in Europe. Like, why can't we do it in North America? It's just because it's just not a thing to do. Yeah. You know, maybe this is, this is how the pandemic has changed the industry as well, right? So yeah. it's not going to be the same anymore. And then we're going to have a different way to actually present themselves and present the product, present uh, the service, you know, and then we have the outdoor, we have the patios, right? So we... So the, it's going to be yeah. so different now, you know, the, the food industry and the restaurant industry. Yeah, I think, it's, and it's better, I think, for customers. Uh, like we have a few ramen restaurants, Japanese ramen restaurants here, that before the pandemic they refused to do takeout ramen because they didn't want to like compromise the noodles and the broth. Mm -hmm. And then, and the pandemic happened, and they're like, okay, we have to figure <laughs> out how to give people like takeout ramen while still maintaining the quality. Um, so I think that's great. There's this one restaurant that has a cool, like, their takeout bowl is, like, the broth is below. But oh, it's then, crazy, yeah. Yeah, the broth is below, but the noodles are on top, and then, like, the broth heats up the noodles. It's cool. Like, oh. so it's cool to see all these different ways um, that restaurants are, are trying to, you know, trying to stay uh, afloat. Yeah. On that note about uh, supporting the community, and I think the new show Hot Pot, they try their best as well, you know, in Vancouver, they support like the local, like, you know, the Vancouver General Hospital, they actually donate a meal to them. And then in Boston, they actually donate meals to the Boston Women's Hospital. And then uh, in, San, and in San Francisco, they actually supported, you know, they actually donated masks, like face masks. Like when, when at the beginning of the pandemic, right, when masks were so scarce, you know, like and it's such a molly, like, and then... So they actually can try the way to actually find masks that should donate to the local community. So, so this is, I think, mean, the hot pot, they have been trying to um, be as much as involved in the local community. So, yeah. And so this was amazing. We're going to keep on hot potting. And um, <laughs> yeah, for several hours here. <laughs> we'll look, we'll look forward to hearing headache. more and, and more about the wine pairing. So we're going to head out and All have right. a great Saturday All right. night. All right. You Bye, Kendra. Has Louis, have you guys been doing a lot of these dinner parties, or is this is this sort of new? Uh, we only did um, the online dinner party that like once, like once, like last year. Um, <clears throat> so what we had to do this more often, you know. And I think it's interesting because we can actually connect to people from different city, not not because of the pandemic, right? Because we can connect with like foodies from different city. 
And um, so we, we know, like, and then we can talk about different city, different taste, different culture, different, like, um, how, you know, how part of being, um, you know, love in different city, right? So I think that's what yeah. we want to know. And, and yeah, I think it's cool that you're experimenting or that Lu Luis show is experimenting um, with that sort of thing. There's, like, here, there's been a few companies that have been doing virtual, like, wine tasting and virtual chocolate tastings. Um, so yeah, you know, it's not like, it's not exactly the same as being in person, but um, it's still pretty cool. <laughs> hot pot tasting is probably pretty new. I don't, I haven't, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not seen hot pot. Like, I virtual, virtual hot pot tasting. Yeah, this is the first. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, so is there any like a uh, restart in Alberta? Like a, like a reboot of the business? And whatnot. I mean, right now, so right well, Alberta, the way they, the way Alberta likes to do it is they just restart it, and then they have to shut down. And then they close it down again. So I think they are actually going to reopen again, like maybe probably in the next, next week. week. Yeah. But yeah. then I feel like they're just going to close it again. Yeah. In a, in a month or two, they'll shut down again. <laughs> I I do wish there were more, and I've heard from like small business owners and restaurant owners that there's just there's not enough. There hasn't been enough support for them. So. Um, so it's tough because, and then it's hard because right now a lot of people, you know, and, and rightfully, you know, you're, you're not sure if you should be eating in a dining room mm -hmm. or you're not sure if you should be eating on a patio. So it's just like, it's just a tough situation for everyone. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's uh, yeah. something with here too. Like we, we have a kind of a restart next week, next Tuesday, apparently. I'm going to make an announcement yeah. that you can start going back, like dining, like indoor. I don't, what's the oh, what's really? like right now? Like, it, can you actually? Is there only outdoor dining right now? Or? Oh, there's no no dining at all. No dining at all. So it's it's only takeout right now. Yeah. They they closed dining rooms and then they did patio only last week. I think two weeks ago. And then two weeks ago they closed the patio, so there's only takeout. Uh, I feel so bad for the restaurants who like invested so much money in like nice patios. Yeah, a lot of restaurants made some like they added new patios. They like they got. They got extended patios, um, and then that shut down too. Yeah, so. and just instantly, it was like you and have to shut down by the weekend. It's just bad timing because I feel like had maybe the restrictions been done during winter, like January, February, maybe, and then now it's nice out and it's summertime and people do want to be outside, and maybe we would have been in, in a better position. Um, <laughs> but now we're doing the restrictions, and then it's just hard. Oh. I mean, we can still have picnics outside, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're trying to open up booze. You can have booze on your picnics now too. And then all the restaurant has to like you know, come up with like picnic ideas, right? Like picnic. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been cool to see, yeah, like picnic packs and burger packs and all mm -hmm. sorts of different like takeout stuff. Um, yeah, in in uh, Edmonton, they just approved. Um, there's like 47 parks where people can now drink alcohol. Um, during like if they if they have picnics, you can have alcohol with it too. In Edmonton, <laughs> people love their alcohol in Edmonton. People love their alcohol everywhere. <laughs> Do you think we drink less? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after the pandemic, um, right? So, um, well, this is my apartment. I, I share with my two roommates, and then but then like, yeah. um, like we, it's good to have two roommates. You know, I, basically we can't see anyone else, right? So then, like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then, like, last year, like, the roommates and we pretty much just stay home and play, like, <laughs> three way, like, three way carps game or mahjong or. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a karaoke machine here. So, <laughs> so we just stay nice. home, like, every, like, so it's good, like, we actually, but then, like, I know a lot of people, they live alone. It's, it's like, oh, they have to. Mm. Uh, it's, hard, it's really hard for them. Yeah. Sure. Linda practically lives alone. Oh yeah, Mike works out of town a lot. In um, BC. In BC, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we actually have a friend who lives alone. So I don't know what the rule is in BC, but in Edmonton here we have: if you live alone, you can have two people that you, that are in your cohort that you can hang out with. Um, so we're in his cohort, so we can we can see him. But otherwise, he's always by himself. <laughs> and he works in the restaurant restaurant industry, so. Yeah, so yeah, so that's been tough for him too. You know, we doing well with the uh, the vaccine, and everything, you know, and then yeah, 
yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's looking great, you know, for the industry. And like in the Are you in the uh, Pfizer gang? <laughs> I'm in the Pfizer gang. <laughs> I'm in the Zeneca zombies. <laughs> 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 right before everyone was like, oh, don't get AstraZeneca. <laughs> That's when I got it. But he's fine. Yeah. I haven't died yet, so. Um, yeah, no, we, I think in Alberta, they're hoping that everyone can get their second doses by the end of the summer. The summer, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully. Because I think they said 50% of, of the population has the first shot, so. Yeah. That's pretty, like. That's pretty good, yeah. I mean. And, like, teens and kids and stuff, too. Yeah. That's good. You know, foodies like us, we need to travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's true. I know. Um, do, you guys travel, been, do you guys travel yeah. overseas too? or? Mm, yeah, not as much. No, yeah. We've been to Japan, Italy, Spain. Spain. So we've traveled. We have traveled, <laughs> yeah. But normally, I usually do a lot of like Alberta, even BC, Alberta, BC travel. So Canadian travel. Shoot. We really wanted to go to Vietnam. Yeah, we like, were gonna. We had plans to go to Vietnam before the pandemic. It's on my list, it's on my list too. I want to go to Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we will. That's that's on. That's a high on the list for when we can travel again. Have you ever thought of like going to China to have this kind of hot pot? <laughs> Actually, I would. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I really want to. Yeah. It's just like it's so big. So many places <laughs> to choose from. So, um, yeah, where are we? Um, for for the usual hot pot, you know they they have there's well I guess like a twelve hundred uh, locations. I mean, majority of them yeah. is in China, right? So, but in Chongqing, you know, and they just have their flagship store, like fresh ship like hot pot. It's just amazing, it's beautiful. Yeah, we gotta go to Chongqing. House. So um, yeah, you guys oh. like ever like you know like go to China, you know, just let me know, and then I'll hook you up with the usual hot pot for sure. Yeah, give us all of the recommendations on where to eat in China. And you know, That's like a pretty big country. I know. <laughs> and you know, I watch Crazy Rich Asians, so I really want to go to Singapore. <laughs> it's not in China, though. Well, but like they're Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys see the the dessert, the ping pen, whatever? Oh yeah, it's the yeah. Ice we have it over there. It's like a uh, yeah. It's like it's like a jelly. With um, fruit. Can you just go in the hot pot? No! <laughs> it's supposed to cool you down, you know, from the hot pot, so yeah. Yeah, well, they have the, they actually having new uh, hot pot um, soup base. Like, we, 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 so far we only have a spicy one and a tomato one. Um, but they're actually gonna come up with more, like, you know, uh, recipes. I'm thinking. Up. I'll garlic. let you go. Mike really likes garlic base, but we just, we came with garlic. We just, I threw the all, whole thing. Yeah, you threw all in. the garlic in. <laughs> oh, I love the garlic ones too, actually. And uh, the garlic, yeah. garlic with the sesame oil, oh, that's the best though. Yeah. So good. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, whatever, like, whatever updates or changes they're doing um, to kind of pivot or innovate, let us know. Okay. And like, thanks so much for inviting us to your dinner party. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. It's, 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 it's such a such a fun party, actually, to <laughs> talk to you guys for sure. And then I know so much about like Edmonton, you know, what the food seems like, you know, um, and how people are dealing with the pandemic. And hopefully, um, uh, we all like looking forward to the future and the industry to back on their feet and then doing well, right? So yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then when we're able to travel again, we'll have to like show off. You know, where like all the, we'll we'll go to Luishu uh, in person in both Vancouver. Yeah, and sure. Yeah. Well, I'll take you to, like I don't know, like I got, I got so many restaurants I can recommend too. So just let me know. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We'll exchange lists. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. This was so fun. Um, and delicious. Thanks so much to Luishu for uh. For the great, like I, I was. We should have angled it a bit oh, more. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And, and the beautiful wine from. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wine wine wine. Wine. Pretty much empty now. Yeah. This is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. one. You like that one? The Riesling was my favorite. Time. I yeah. actually drank quite a bit. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you drank quite a bit for yourself. <laughs> now you'll have to ask your roommates to come out and help oh, you. <laughs> no, he'll, he'll just finish it himself. <laughs> <laughs> 
so funny. Okay, thank you guys great. so much. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for my, thanks, David. This is fun. <laughs> no, really press end. Huh? Yeah, he's gonna go press end. <laughs> okay, and bye. Bye. <laughs>